Hello, this is the Manic Drive Remix. If you don't know who Manic Drive is, check them out on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your music. Really cool band, I believe, from, I want to say Canada. Now, I could be wrong. When I first made my remix, I was completely done. That's what, you know, if you see this yellow, it says New Vibe. I'll explain what's going on here. Um, this was the original remix. And it was super cool. Stay calm, I'm ready to go. Got it's very, uh, very cinematic. So good major there. I like that. I like it. It's a build. Break, go. Cinematic, orchestral. Very movie-esque, which is cool. Nothing wrong with it. Good major there. Beautiful. So that was the original, um, that was the original remix I had going. It's very Illinium style. Um, but my wife walks in and she's like, that's the remix. I was like, yeah, what, what's wrong with it? And she was like, it's literally the same arrangement as the original song. And I was like, honey, people do that all the time. They keep the same arrangement. They just change stuff. And she was like, no, you, if you're going to remix something for them, like, like their song, their original song has the, you know, that fun rock, you know, under, if you listen to the original song, it's got the big crashes, the bit, it's a great song. So she was like, you got to do something different. And I was like, it is different. It's got, listen to all these chord changes and the chorus has a beautiful, you know, step and a major. And she's like, yeah, but they're just going to hear that and say, you made our song a little bit more cinematic and it's almost like a movie score. And so it's like, do you really think they're going to play like a movie score at their concert? Or do you think they want something like super fun and bouncy and fresh. So I was like, okay, fine. So my wife, bless her heart, challenged me to just take this whole idea and put it in the trash, which kind of sucks because I spent like a good, you know, eight hours on it. Um, so anyways, with that being said, let's take this now and turn it off and show you what I'm now working on. It's called the new vibe. Um, which I'll still pitch this to them. I'll give it to them and say, hey, I, I worked on it for a day. You know, my wife didn't like it. Um, not saying she's the final say, but I do trust her. And um, I think she's led by the Holy Spirit too. So here's the new vibe. And I want to work with this with you guys today to kind of give you an idea of what it's like. Like, what do you do when you originally made something and now you got to start from scratch? So I made this last night and today I got to work on it. Um, but just take a listen. It's really fun. It's very fresh, and I think you're gonna like it. I should probably turn this on though. Stay calm, I'm not ready to go. Got a feeling that you already know that I'm pressured with all this stress. Already, it's got like, it's already got like a bounce to it. Check, check, mic check. Yeah. Something fun. Live horns are good. Bring in the bass. Ooh, where's the shaker right there? That's what it needs right there, a shaker. It needs that rhythm. Percussion. We're in 90, so let's type in 90. I, I want to say I've got some stuff. There we go. Nah. Let's just 
just need a little shaker right here. I might take out the clap on this. It, it feels like it's a little too much. Just do something like this. Whee! And then it stops right there. Let's take a listen. See if we can get around this. Mm. For this little part right here, I'm probably going to just turn it down. That's weird though. Look at the Look at the wave file on this. It's like not exactly on. This is a very large shaker, by the way. Look at that all the way. Yeah, that's it. So let's go here and let's just line. We, we got to make sure everything's lined up real nice and pretty. Because it just felt a little off. So command U. I did command A and we did, I want to say eighth notes because that's what it's doing. It's actually 16th, but I think they're going to be fine. Let's listen to it real fast. Might want to put this into Complex Pro. And then if you want to, instead of having to turn down each of those little hits, you can go to your EQ. I might have to turn them all down. So you're going to come in here. I'm just going to turn this one down manually. I just, I don't like how over domineering the, what did I do that one at? Let's go to negative 11 or negative 12 for each of them. I just didn't like how like it took too much of the snare spot because we have we have that already and if you do too much of it. Let's listen to this before we get carried away and see if that fits very well. See what happens if we do this instead. I definitely like this vibe better. Just think it has a better tonality. That. What's going on in this low end? Listen here. What is that? I would just get rid of it. Don't know what it is. I see it. In the background. Yeah. All right, so that shaker sounds really nice on that part.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a side chain and I have to duck all these other frequencies. So let's go ahead and hit command J and that's going to consolidate this whole clip into a drum pattern. And then from there you can right click and hit create new drum drum rack or something like that create new drum convert to drums or something like that um, so once it completes we'll do that so anyways this is what's happening boom you've got your deal right here and then you hit convert drums to new MIDI track so it's gonna scan this whole track and it's gonna break down where the kicks are where the um, snare is and where the you know other thing is just make sure I didn't do this already usually else it'll say ghost so now look here's your hi-hat here's your snare and here's your kick the first thing you do which is so important is to go listen to the drums and to make sure it's accurate because a lot of times it's not and you have to fix it so see how it's picking up other stuff. So I'm just going to do it manually now. Yep, 
It's doing like three things. I'm just listening for the kick. Hey. I can kind of guess what's going to happen here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then there's nothing there. Let's see. Okay, so we've got that. We've got these three bars to do. So let's put them in and listen real quick. Clean, clean housework. Everything looks good. Still good. Yep. Uh huh. Uh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Still good. One more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we don't even need anything here. Okay, so that's that takes care of that one. Let's move to our next one and let's take this whole thing and let's put it right here. Oh, let's delete delete all of this. It's got four bars. All right, listen to this one. Yep, still good. So what I would do on this one is, since I'm taking out the bass, let's keep it in there for now. Still good. Finish well. Okay, last one. This is our ghost, by the way, if you're just now joining us. We're making a ghost side chain. And we're just double checking it. This is probably the most important thing you can do um, to be correct on your side chains. Okay, so we're correct on our side chain. Turn this off and name this, I usually call it ghost, whatever it is, so ghost verse, whatever. Now, what you can do with this is you can go to things like your shaker or your bass or anything really. And you can compress it just a little bit from your ghost verse. So we're gonna listen to our shaker and listen to where it ducks a little bit, but kind of has some good flow to it.
Okay, so let's go to our base. This is, you know, something that is, or these, these ooze can have it too. It's cleaning up all the frequencies where your um, where your bass or or where your kick is trying to be. Like what is this? That's my horns. So let's put a little bit on there. I I like the attack of this like you know to be pretty on point, but I, I still want that kick to be the most. Those are keys. So let's do them on that too, but very light. A little bit more. See, that's not much. Even negative 20 is, is not much listening to it. Um, this is going to be the most important. So this says kick, but there's nothing happening with it. So let's go here and let's really make this like duck. All right. So now you should be able to hear a lot the um the kick a lot better and that's just going to release the singer to you know do his thing and sound better and crisp okay so let's do this i don't know why this is here Stay calm, I'm not ready to go. Got a feeling that you already know that I'm pressured with all this stress. I got something to get off my chest. Sounds better. She has started with exposed to the cold. I'm shivering down to the bones. Yeah, I'm tired of being put to the test. To be honest, I could use the rest. Just tell me you love me. Tell me you care. Yeah, I love for the shine. So that needs like a, uh, the bass needs to go warm. So check this out. Let's listen to that and just make sure it, it sounds good. Oh, that's on, I'm sorry. This is on the wrong setting. This should be on MIDI control pitch bend. All right, here we go. That sounds good. I like it. So then you can actually take, if, if you're satisfied with that, you can put it on the other one as well. So see how that kind of changes stuff in our mix. Woo, there it is. It kind of goes down. Okay, I like it. We're cleaning it up. Let's listen to the piano as it is a sample and let's let's make sure that we're you know hitting the correct notes. A lot of times I can just throw something in there and it sounds great, but it might not go the best with it. So, let's listen. Sounds good. Let's go to our deal here. Now, I will say this is a very funky choir. The 
the choirs, they come in at a very interesting time. If you were to take out his vocals, um, I think these three are his vocals. So let's take these out for a second and just listen to um, the beat itself. It's 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 okay. It works, but it's it's, it's very funky. I'm wondering if it just needs to be more right here and that's why it is funky. Sometimes these samples will have a little bit of space in the middle of them. Yeah, you can actually see that needs to be there. There we go. So weird. Might be something that I have to like from scratch really do myself. For instance, we know this 83 right here needs to be on. So let's just put that guy there. That sounds better. really tell where this is this is a difficult one So like even for this, if you take it and just pull it back a little bit. Let's see what's happening. I think this is it. So weird. See, my whole, the aim of my charge is just to get this lined up with 90 BPM and, and it's weird sample, but I'm getting there. This is what I want, actually. Maybe it is this. Oh, I see now on the bottom. You can see this right here. This little thing is the change. Somebody's changing there. What a weird, what is going on here? Maybe it's not that one, maybe it's this one. Oh well, just use your ears, get it close.
Hmm. That might be all we can get. Okay, I like that a lot. I think that's a lot closer than it was. So we're going to take it and copy it. This is what I mean when I talk about like house cleaning or keeping your session clean. Like there's so many little things with samples that if you're not looking at them actively, they might be totally off. So this, this should sound a lot better. All right, here's the beat. Super cool. One thing I do need to do is put some uh, some 808 underneath this. I like it, but there's <laughs> bass tells the story. It it really does. It tells you, you know, where you're going and like what direction you're going, the mood you're going. And without bass, the uh, singer sounds great, but it's not as powerful. It really isn't. So let's just listen for some. Maybe like a little 808 stab. That one's not bad. There you go. This one's nice, this SMNP. And the reason why I like it is because it has a slap on it. And what we're doing with uh, this song in the intro is very jazzy. It's got those nice little uh, horns. It's got some high pianos. So I think this is gonna complement really well. And we can get another one if this isn't the one. Now, I, I, we can go into Serum and maybe smooth it out a little bit because it is a little funky. I might want something more of like a sign. So I know that in Nexus, um, it has a like ready to go, I think it's called three octave or something like that. So if you just go to bass and hit 808 boom, is all you need, something real simple. Um, what you want to do though is put on this ghost verse on top of this to duck it. I know I'm moving fast, but it makes sense in my head, which probably is not a good way to do things if I'm teaching, but here we go. There we go. You hear that, how sharp that is? Oh yeah. Let's try it here. Nah, it's gotta be.
There you go. Uh. 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 That's fun. So, you want to match the horns, right? So we can go like this. So, yeah, I, that's cool to go down first and then up. What this does is when you listen to it on a phone or on a car or anything else like that, it's gonna give it more direction instead of it just being like picture it without this bass very open to interpretation of what key we're in like or at least like what chord we're on the horns are light They're, they don't give too much but when you add this underneath and you turn the vocals back on Woo! jazzy Yeah. I might take Mangler and bring out that shaker just a little bit. It's kind of quiet, but I like to expand it. All right, cool. So now we've got a much better intro. Um, that bass that we added, that little stab bass, really just you know shows us where we're going, and that's super important uh, for the listener too. Like I mentioned earlier, this version of the song is so much more fun, um, and it just has that. I don't know. It's more of a remix in my opinion. The the other one is like a cinematic movie score. This is fun. It's it's jazzy and it's just you know just beautiful so far. You know the beat itself if you take the vocals out is so cool. Very cool. Yeah. I like that part, how it goes up. Yeah. Now the vocal right here the reverb needs to be, this is more housekeeping, but the, the reverb needs to be cleaned up right there. It doesn't need to go on forever. So. Oh. <sighs> One of these days I'll figure out how to make Let's turn this on. Let's start working with the unit as a whole. How can we spice things up with his vocals? Stay calm, I'm ready to 
That's all it needs right there is some sort of like snare trap drum to be like click 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 to kind of end it. So if I go to my splice and I look at my samples, I want to say I got some snares. Let's go to... What was the trap? Yeah, here we go. What was it called? Brickle? Something like that. Bag. But I actually want, um, I want my snare. So you can delete this MIDI because I've got it here that I can duplicate. All right, this is gonna be my chorus snare roll ending. And I wanna take one of the snares from in this pack. Let's see if. Then right here, you're gonna do this little number. Make it a little. I kind of like even more of a roll than that. Okay, maybe that's too much. You can actually take your, take this dude out. I mean, that, that has good bounce to it, but let's see if I can get, like, what does it sound like? You do something like this. I think we have to dumb it down. Yeah. Something like that. Now that might not be the final, but for me it works. All right, then. Let's see. Mm. 
Mm. All right, so you could reverse reverb his voice in the beginning if you wanted to. Stay calm, I'm not ready to go. Got a feeling that you but I think it could be fun to do some sort of like off the cuff, like boom. But we have to have something before that that really. Um, I don't know. Hits. I, I kind of feel like I hear somebody talking like, you ready? Okay. Something like this. You ready? Yeah. Stay calm, I'm not ready to something, something like that would be kind of fun. But I don't know what that's going to be yet. Sometimes in Splice you can get um, some cool samples of people talking. So let's go to splice.com and let's do this little number. I know the studio is a mess. C'est la vie, tis life. Um, what I think I'm gonna do now, like pushing forward, um, is as a whole, it has a great, you know, it has a great sound. The the drop has a really cool bass sound, really fun. Kind of reminds me. I know this is gonna sound weird, but it kind of reminds me of the song by. Um, the guy that sings Mockingbird and the Crow, he's got one song that talks about his truck. Um, and it's it's kind of the same vibe where it has that like whistle in the background, and it and that became a hit. That got that went gold. So there is something to songs that have a very simple, uh, not very complicated drop. And and when I think about the guys you know, Manic Drive listening to this song and playing it live, I think the people in the crowd are going to love it. They're going to be like, oh, I want to dance. I want to party. And that's a lot of the times remixes are just trying to make a party vibe. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's better to forego all this cinematic, even though this is a lot more complicated as a production, the people don't want complicated. You know, they want simple. They want, they want party, you know? So sometimes you just got to keep that in mind too when you're doing remixes or your own production. Um, Cause I, I can get carried away in like trying to sound like my heroes, you know, Elenium Grizz, uh, Grammatic Weath and Lewis the Child. I want to be so technical. And, but if you listen to their music, a lot of times it's just fun. Good, good old fashioned fun. So yeah, that's probably the easiest way to explain it for now. All right, so <clears throat> the song is now completely done. I know I didn't film everything or show you guys step by step what I did to get it here, but I wanted to at least show you what I did now that it is done so you can understand it. The first thing that I did is if I go to my master chain, I have Make It Loud, which is just a plugin that you can type in right here. Just type in Make It Loud, and you will see that in your audio effects under glue compressor you can just click that twice and it'll add to the mastering change but but I don't need two of them so second thing is I put the OTT over the top but I only put that on the drop like on the courses so you can see here chorus it's on it's all, I only go to the amount and it's from 0 to 2.4%. Same thing over here on the last chorus. It is 2.4% 2, 2 and that's it. Oh, for the last chorus it's also 2.4. So it's just a little bump in the uh, gain and overall whatever OTT does. Then I've got a limiter. Now, if I'm sending this off to a mix engineer, you want to turn all of this off 
send him this file, 32-bit, whatever wave, FLAC, A, I, F, I don't, whatever he says or she says. Um, and then you want to send them this file as well. You want to turn all this stuff on. You give them different versions and whichever one they think they can, you know, work the best with. I've, I've actually had people do that before. They tell me, send the raw, the heated, the cooked, you know, and then they can do their magic from there. So that's Master Chain. What about the entire song? Well, let's turn off the vocals for a second and let's just look at the beat. All right, let's talk about that first, you know, that start. I've got <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, five things going on there. The first one is a, uh, the first one is the drums. This is downloaded from Splice. It's a really cool sound. Very percussive. Love it. My favorite part about that is the little tom that goes, do. I love that. It's so fun. The second thing is my ghost snare. This is for compressing on the kick, side chaining, I mean, on the kick. Um, if you don't know how to side chain, just look up a video on YouTube, how to do that. The third thing is my sub bass. Nexus has a really awesome preset that's just called 808 boom and it's it's just their standard preset 808 boom it's the first thing on bass and i love it it's so tight and to the point it sounds like a sine wave um it's just a little stabby i love it it's also on the first on the one i i think it's a great preset don't be afraid to use presets i know you want to change things as a producer. You don't want to just use straight from splice. You know, you want to change tempo and key. Do that. But if something works, do that too. You know what I mean? For example, this is from splice. This is a horn. And it also sounds great just right out of the box. I mean, that I put some reverb on it, of course. But, I mean, it sounds so nice. Whoever did these samples did a great job. The third thing I have is just a top uh, piano. It's really, really high. And it's like in your ears. Actually, you can see down here, I had to take out so much of these mid, in the middle, I had to take out a lot to make room for the voice. But even after this cut, it was still coming through super hot right here. I mean, it, it's just insane, but it sounds great. So after those, EQ cleanups, you know, we're back to where we need to be. So that's the first part and that's it. You got your vocals sitting on top of that. <clears throat> and um, yeah, now we move over to the build. The build has kind of a different sound to it. It's a, I, I took the uh, horns, see how they were here. I just, I originally had them and then I realized, oh, it's way too busy. Let's just take them out altogether. So I, if you press zero on your uh, keyboard, it'll actually just like mute something, but keep it there. So you're not gonna hear it. So if you need it in the future, you can go back to it. Something I really recommend is instead of deleting the idea, just press zero. Uh, shout out Johnny, uh, California Johnny, Johnny Franco for showing me how to do that way back in the day. All right, here we go. Learn shortcuts, learn Ableton shortcuts. So on the second part, it gets a little more vibey. I love that. Kind of spacey. That's it. So what are we doing here? We got the pianos. They're just rolling, nothing wrong there. Here's my bass. If you know me and you watch my videos, I am a huge fan of the Reese bass. So good, like Lewis the Child, Weathen, Grizz, uh, 
any producer you ask any of them they'll they know what bass this is you know it's such a fun edm bass and i love to like put it in, like think go listen to the song savage by flux pavilion Weathen max like this is the bass they're using uh at least in the verses and stuff all right so here we go we listen to it it's just a low undertone this one is from serum of course um a little cheat sheet instead of making all these patches you can just go to splice and type in respace and then hit presets and download as many respaces as you want they're all going to sound a little different you can change them but i liked the way this sounded so i just used it um if it needed a tweak you could go in and change the cutoff or you could change the rate lfo stuff just make it your own so that's what that bass is doing if we scroll down we will see our choir this is this song is in the key of g and it's 90 bpm and i was lucky enough to find on splice a key of g minor 90 vocal choir so literally the exact thing that i needed um, as you can tell i use splice a lot and it just sounds great now i did have to go in and actually warp everything because it was it just wasn't on beat a lot of times you'll find that just because you download it from splice doesn't mean it's going to be perfect 90 bpm a lot of times it's a little bit off like milliseconds off zero and that throws off everything so <clears throat> just double check you know the samples that you download and make sure that they are all sounding good now one thing i did do that i want to show you here on this uh vocal is i did use effect tricks for um taking the the end of it and warping it so you can hear right here see how that has that effect you know that down deal vinyl sweep so just go to sugar bites i think dot com or sugar bites and type in effect tricks effect tricks that's a very simple and cheap way to achieve this vinyl <clears throat> sound that you're looking for and that's that for that one if we're moving on to the drums they don't really do much different from the first they kind of look the same it actually has more drums in it because we're keeping this part but it's the same thing just going back and forth so y'all know that my kick ghost is still doing the same thing and now we're getting to some more elements this is the shaker that i added now you can tell that i this isn't like a loop you know this was the original loop you hear how it's got that real big snare now if you listen to it with that snare it sounds good but after a while you start to hate it <laughs> so i took it out and i just kept the little shakies and that to me has less less highs in it and from a listening standpoint you're going to focus on his lyrics more because when you put his lyrics in there all you could hear was that shaker going Psh, and hitting you in the face um there was a guy from boogie tracks recording in i think panama city florida um boogie tracks recording studio i don't know if it's there or not still but that engineer told me when i sent him some of my work he said you know the high i don't know why you have so many highs in your track and i thought well i don't think i have that many highs but when you play it on his nice system you really heard it and you're like wow that's that's crazy so what i try to do is i don't like shy away from highs but if i can tell that that's just overkill i'll take them down and then his voice will will be the highs that the listeners you know craving so that's the shaker it's in the background and it it has some processing on it like uh see how i took out just a ton like this is a funky eq but without it see how there's a lot of mids in there and i felt that it only needed um i felt like it only needed the highs so i just boosted it with mangler i think that compresses and gain gain up stuff like that um, so now let's talk about percussion. The drums themselves have percussion. 
but I wanted to add a little more rhythm into it. So let's mute these and listen to see how this sounds. I like it. But the problem is that's the same exact thing we just played here. So like for the listener, there's not you're not taking it up a level or a notch or anything. So I added the shakers and then I added this clap by Oliver, the mix ready clap. It's literally one <laughs> one clap and I didn't do anything to it. It sounds great. It sounds like two you can actually see the left and right channel. They're a little bit seg like uh, segmented to the left and right time-wise, and that's what gives you a really cool, like on your ears, you can feel that they're a little bit left and right. So I didn't have to widen this at all. So I just put it, I think this is like every one and two, or yeah, one and two and three and, it's on the and, it's on the three and on every single one except for the fourth and then it's only on the one and two on that one. And what this does, if you play the shakers with this, is it gives you a little bit of, a little bit more movement. Oh, there it is. Uh, very, very simple. You know, the gain is at negative eight. It's very low in the mix, but it gives you more movement but I wasn't satisfied with that amount of movement. I wanted to actually take the movement up just a little bit. So I created these claps right here. They are panned 25 left, 25 right. And then there's this little kind of roll clap in the middle on center. So I'll show you what this sounds like. So without the roll, with the roll, See how it's going, clap, roll, clap. I'll zoom in for you. So clap, roll, clap. And you can see these claps are not on the one. They are a little bit, you know, a little bit loose because I'm trying to mimic real people. Real people do not clap on the one just like every time. Go to any venue with people. It is, they're so off. They're always off because they don't have the in-ears. So I'm trying to make it, give it that kind of loose, you know, almost re reggaeton, just like, ah, oh, good vibes, who cares, go with it. And, and it really, I think, paid off with all three. So let's listen to the claps with the shaker and the drums, and, and you'll hear the difference. Uh, so much better. And I really didn't do a lot. It doesn't, it doesn't muddy the mix. You know, they're EQ'd. I believe they're EQ'd. These aren't even EQ'd. But, I mean, I'm not worried about, I guess I could put a EQ on the very top end of the whole thing and just get the lows out. So that, that just makes room for the sub right there. You can actually hear the before and after. Yeah, that's I, I can hear it in my headphones, but that's just sub. And you don't need that, you know, for the claps. 80, by the way, if you're wondering like, well, where's a good spot to do sub stuff? 80 is, or 120. So I'll just split the difference. I'll go 100. Just use your ears. <clears throat> okay. And then the last thing is this little Snoop Dogg esque thing it's kind of like a down sweep but it reminds me of snoop dogg when he goes you know snoop but it's different because it's like a down and it's not even the same key or bpm or anything but that's kind of the idea is to kind of like get it rolling um so yeah that's the second part very vibey. All right, we're moving to the chorus.
so simple. <laughs> That bass note is so good. The one that goes down right here. So this was a really cool bass um, that I found on Splice. It was huge. Like, look at this waveform. Are you kidding me? I think I can just click it right here. Look at that. That's crazy. Usually when I get stuff from Splice, it's like here. Dude, this dude is like zero dB. So I was like, oh, I got to use this. This thing's crazy. But I, I did change this note on there. It was originally the same note, but going down a semitone, oh, it, it just, it's like completely made it like this bass stank face, like, oh, ugh, ugh. You ever look at your friends with that face when you hear a song, you're like, it's like unofficial approval. You're just like, yeah, you don't even have to say yeah, just. And then they look back at you and they go, stank face approved. So that's for the bass, what's happening. And the other thing that's happening is a kick. I put a, I put this punchy little dude, it's just very punchy right there. And that helps you as a listener, especially through iPhone or through iPad or any sort of medium that's not bass you know doesn't have a subwoofer on it or maybe the subwoofer is very small that'll help you your ear understand the timing and help you feel the punch and then you can feel the bass so this is what it sounds like regular it has it has a little a little kick to it but when you put the kick on it i mean it's just like oh i know where it is so i usually like to put a kick uh and tune it as well to the key of the song. This is G minor, so I think the kick is in G. I don't think you really need, I don't think a kick, I think it can only be the, the key, not the actual major or minor, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> the snare, we go even simpler. This is just a snare downloaded from, it's actually from the same pack, um, and it's just a one shot. And it just does this the whole time. No processing, no, Nothing, not even a gain change. Literally just as lazy as you get. It's not lazy, but as unprocessed as you can get for a snare, put it on there and that's it. Because if it ain't broke, don't go fixing it. Um, then I ended up not using this for whatever reason. Uh, the whistle, this is from Cashmere's pack. Um, you're starting to see as a producer, I like to grab from splice and just kind of take from everybody and make something new and fresh. But I also like to, you know, put in my own production synthesizers, whatever samples I have. But this whistle y'all is so fire. Like, look, I don't even have any reverb on it. It has the perfect, like the perfect amount of reverb, just really nice, really clean. So I was like, don't mess with it. Um, and then this is a uh, sample of some hats. And look at the waveform here. See how the left and right channel has two different things going on. Uh, right channel's louder than the left, left is louder than the right, same thing. And then right is louder than the left. And then so on and so forth. That's what makes a really good hi-hat right there especially see how things are kind of changing right in here you can see it's just not all the same when you put the same hi-hats just on top of each other it sounds good but these this steps it up so if you're looking for a way to like if you need a way for your uh, music to sound a little more mature a little more grown up that's one way to do it and that's the chorus y'all so now <laughs> As crazy as it sounds, I took this and I just duplicated it to right here. So it's the same exact thing, but what he says is different. So I added like one extra item. I think right here, you can see I added this little sweep down. 
it's just like a little sine wave going woo. And then I think there's like a riser here just to give it a little more something different, but everything else is the same. So there's no need for me to explain it twice. Um, this looks different. What is this? Oh, that. Yeah, so that's just the horns. Um, so I guess I changed this horn to a different sound, like a different uh, note. And I did that with Melodyne using the polyphonic sustain method. So you guys already know um, how this all went down because I explained it over here. So let's move on to the last thing and that is a bridge and a chorus that took me and my wife by surprise because she, she helps me arrange and, and mix and she came in here and she was like, you know, you can't make the whole song sound drumline, but because they have some drumline in their original song, you can probably get away with just ending it like that, and, and that would be fun for live too. So what had happened was I took the piano and did a really fun, um, I'll just play it back from like right here. And it's worth mentioning, this is reversed right here, this piano, because in the lyrics he says this. If only, if only I could turn back time. If he says, if only I could turn back time. So I could have left it like this. But why, why not reverse it? Because that's turning back time, is taking something and like, going backwards, so I, th I thought that was such a cool moment in the song. It's probably one of my favorite moments. If only I could turn back time. If only I could change. So good. And his voice pauses, so get, you're allowed to hear the the deal. So it just, that that was a really cool part to me. So let's move on. If only I could turn back time. If only I could change your mind. If only I could save your life. If only I could save your life. If only I could save you, save you. So you'll see for that part, there is, I mean, even with this ghost snare, there's nothing, you could probably take that ghost snare out. You don't need it unless you like the way that it affects the, you know, this. If only I could turn back time. If only I could change your mind. If only I could save your life. If only I could save your life. If only I could save you, save you. If only I could turn back time. If only I could change your mind. If so now you come here. We got some horns going on. Some drums going on. Some side chaining for those drums going on. And then this is where everything changes. These, This drum line right here. <laughs> you hear that little dude in the background? Doot, doot, doot. <laughs> He's so fun. He's like, doot, doot, doot. Um, so what's happening here? This is a pack, I believe it's called Cobra from Splice. And just some really cool, it's in the same key and BPM. So, or maybe not the same key, but BPM at least. So it's like a, it's like a drum line, you know? And then you got this little whistle dude. Because I wanted it to be like the, you know, the maestro or whatever you call those people is going like one, two, three, let's go. And then it just absolutely goes into this amazing drum line kind of dance thing. And I found, so, so let's listen to it and I'll explain. so good bring in that bass uh. stank face Woo. love it 
such a good part of the song and it's the ending so after you hear that you're like i want to listen to the whole thing again but let's explain what's going on here so i've got these horns beautiful clean takes and i think this is the harmony Oh, never mind. So these are just stacked on top of each other. I gotcha. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening here. Let's see. Um, so those are just stacked on top of each other. They sound great. Keep them in there. And then what is this? Manic Drive gives us a sample from their... This is from the original production. This is from the song Under. I, this is crazy. Let's go. All the bass goes out. And then right there, I actually had to take the bass out with this uh, auto filter. You can see I, I had to cut the bass. Normally it'd be like, you can hear the bass is a lot stronger. But I had to take it out because I throw in my own bass and you can't have two basses going at the same time. So love that drum line. So happy that I got to use it in a sample and I put my bass underneath it. Super cool. This is some more drum line stuff. Just stuff introducing it. And these are, this is called a clash. Like in, in a drum line, you go, y'all remember that stuff? I mean, you gotta have that in drum line. Let's go. And I've got my new kick, which is just telling you where the bass is. If we listen to that with the bass. So that's helpful. And then there is the snare, of course, that I never changed. And this this is new. Here's the hi-hats, but this is new. This is a snare roll ending. That's just something simple that I made uh, using a drum rack, and it kind of ends the song. Now, the biggest question on this song that I'll probably get is, what is that really cool horn sound? This dude right here. Well, that would be a saxophone, <laughs> and it's super cool. And I really wanted to utilize it um, when I first heard it. I was like jumping around in splice, and I, I found it, and I was like, I gotta save that. I want to use that someday. And about a week later, I ended up looking for it, and I found it, and it sounds super dope. It's what I use to open and close the song. It kind of reminds me of like, "Baby, I'm worth it." Or there's a song. Like, the, I don't know if it's that one, but whoever heard me say that just now is probably screaming, saying, I know what song you're talking about. All right, so that is the song in a nutshell. Um, when it comes to, like, what levels do you put your kick? What levels do I need? It doesn't matter. You, <laughs> what I do is I take my, I put ozone maximizer IRC4, this one, with a transient, and I put the deal all the way to a fast. Learned that from Mr. Spencer Brent with Circuit Riders. Really cool guy. Um, go follow Riders. They got some new music out. But that's what I do before I even start working on the track. I just put this on, and then I just make sure the whole thing isn't louder than like negative six because negative six is super loud. And every, anytime you go above that, I don't know, you, you can go above it and get it really loud, but it just always gets too loud in my opinion. So um, if we listen to the whole song, like let's go to the loudest part of the song. Where are we at? Negative, negative 10, negative 11 right here. Um, you should be like at negative 12 RMS. And then for the loudest parts of your song, negative nine, maybe negative six if it's super loud. 
So just dynamically. So now we're at negative nine. This is the build. So the chorus should be the loudest part, right? Negative 11 or negative 12, negative nine, negative six, right? And we're at negative 6.9. So we're actually a little quieter, which is better because you have, you, you're not, you're not fighting the loudness war. When you send this to a mastering engineer, they're going to be able to take the whole thing at 32 bit float and they're going to be able to make this where they need it to be. So just remember, don't, don't go crazy on gain. Like you can just pull the whole thing down if you need to, for instance, um, let me just put these inside of here. So this this whole yellow is the song. See how it's at negative eight? That's how much I had to bring it down just to get it to like peak at negative six. But I mean, you can make it a lot quieter. And look, there's still... So I was at negative eight. What if I were to go to negative 10? Let me see if I'll peak at all. Watch right here. Yeah, see, I'm still clipping by 1.5 dB, which is crazy. It's a loud song, but I liked it at negative eight. I felt like it had a lot of, you know, potential at that spot. So I kept it there. And when you send your stuff to the mastering engineer, just make sure to remember to leave space at both ends. So like drag this out. Um, but if you're not doing, you know, if you're not, you can just keep it short. So I'm giving it a little bit of space at the end so it's not just so abrupt. And then right here, you can see I give it a tiny bit of space. I could start it right here to where it just hits right off the bat. But if I'm gonna send this off, I want it to have just that little bit of space. So I hope you guys learned something today. Um, this is how the song was made. It has now been sent to Manic Drive. They will take a listen to it. If they like it, we'll talk more. Um, but yeah, this song took me three days to produce, probably eight hours in the studio each day. So a total of 24 hours. Um, and it was super worth it. It was so, this is, this is a song that I'm going to drop for sure. And you guys can watch my TikTok or my Instagram reels or Facebook reels and just see, you know, me jam into this because it's really fun to play. So uh, with that being said, have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. Remember to subscribe, like, do all that good stuff, and I will keep on posting more of these. All right. Bye.